a hat trick hero in DC, a new team atop the Western Conference, and some tough talk for Toronto FC next on The Daily. Hey everybody, happy Monday and welcome to another edition of The Daily here with Greg Lawless. I'm Nick Fershaw looking back at the biggest headlines from week seven in MLS. Start with a good one on Sunday, DC United at home against the New York Red Bulls in this Atlantic Cup rivalry match and it was all DC United, a 4-1 win. Chris Pontius shows up in this one, three goals, a hat trick for the DC United hero. Well, they've been talking about uh, what position Chris Pontius should play and they've been saying that probably since he joined the league. Looks like forward might be the one because since he's moved up there, Ben Olsen has seen his young striker coming through in hordes. He had three against New York and after the game Ben, ben Olsen actually said the scary thing is we, ha we don't know what he can do at yeah. forward because he doesn't even know how to play forward. So pretty impressive from Pontius. On the other side quote terrible defending from yeah. New York. Thierry Henry and Hans Bakke both coming out and really lambasting the guys uh, playing defense for the Red Bulls. And Wilman Conde obviously sat this one out for the New York Red Bulls. That's going to be an issue going forward for them if they can't uh, make do without him in the lineup. But hey, DC United unbeaten in their last six. They are now the second best team in the Eastern Conference. Well, the team atop the Eastern Conference is still sporting Kansas City, but they are no longer unbeaten. We wondered if they could survive that two-game road trip out west to Vancouver and then to Portland on Saturday night where they lost 1-0. An own goal by Chance Myers that sealed their fate. And this one, a nice win for Portland, but the big story here, sporting Kansas City no longer perfect. Yeah, and really just not looking like themselves. They looked a little bit sluggish out there. Portland were buzzing around a little bit. Didn't really create too many chances. I think back to the game, Nick, and I, I don't remember any great chances the way we usually see from Sporting Kansas City. The guys on the flanks, Sinovic and, and Myers not pushing forward. And the own goal from Myers was really a mix up between Julio Cesar and Myers in the back, just trying to clear a cross. Because on the other side, Portland didn't create too many yeah. chances either. It was a game that was mainly played in the midfield. But uh, I think they just looked tired. They were obviously on a long road trip out to, they got the win in Vancouver and then down to Portland. And uh, no longer with that perfect record for sporting. You gotta assume fatigue played a part mm -hmm. in this one. And on the Timbers side, that win is, it ends a losing streak yeah. that's been really uh, bugging John Spencer and his club. A huge win for the Portland Timbers on Saturday night. Well, there's a new best team in the Western Conference, and that's the San Jose Earthquakes, a team I don't think many people expected to be here uh, in April, but they got a big win over Real Salt Lake on Saturday night, a 3-1 win out at Buckshaw Stadium. They had the advantage of two red cards on RSL, but nonetheless, they closed the deal late. Yeah, and again, they, they just continue to find ways to win. Now, obviously, you're going up against nine men. It makes it easier, and they almost didn't get it done. It was 1-1 until very late in this game, and then... Simon Dawkins got the winner and Chris Wondolowski iced it late. Uh, after the game, Real Salt Lake pretty disappointed about the way this went. Lots of talk about the red card to Olave in particular. I think the one to Espindola, no one really has much of an argument about that. He went in very hard and studs up. The one to Olave though, we've watched replays again and again and it looks like Leonard really kind of takes a dive on this one. He actually grabs Olave's shorts and almost pulls him down. The referee being behind the play, that's a big factor in this because he can't really see what's going on. Maybe a, a, one of the assistant referees could have helped him out in that situation. Lennart, a very smart, savvy striker, knows how to get into those situations. He seems to do it every single week. Uh, but you know what? This Quakes team, they're legit. This is a team that can definitely challenge for the Western Conference title and maybe beyond once the playoffs come around. And don't forget they played this game without a handful yeah. of starters. Marvin exactly. Chavez out with suspension. Salinas and Bernardez also missing out on this one because of injury. Don't forget the San Jose Earthquakes, the top team in the Western Conference. Well, last but not least, we want to take a look at the bottom of the table. And unfortunately for Toronto FC, that's where the Reds have been all season long. They're 0-6 thus far this season after another loss over the weekend at the Chicago Fire. A back and forth game that ends with the Chicago Fire. A 3-2 win there. But the big news coming out on Monday. Tom Anselmi, the COO of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, saying this has to change. Our fans deserve better. Yeah, and it's hard to really understand what's going on with Toronto right now because if you look at the players they have on the field, they should be at least getting some results. A win at home, even a draw at home. When you think about the guys like Torsten Frings, obviously he's back from injury and what he can do. Ryan Johnson up top, Joao Plata, and now Reggie Lamb showing what he's capable of, uh, getting a couple of goals, you know, a stunner of a goal actually yeah. from, from distance for them. So you're just wondering, why is it not working? And everyone, of course, now looking at Aaron Vinter. Lots of questions about his job security. But ultimately, what is going on with Toronto comes down to 
Do you believe in the system? Right. Do you believe in the idea of developing players the way they've been working? They've got a couple of good young players when you think about Ashton Morgan and, and you, uh, Daniel Henry and some good young players yeah. that they're bringing along. If you believe in that system, then I think you've got to stick with uh, Vinter in this one. And then, but at the same time, you've got to start getting results. And uh, you know, every, every now and then they just seem sluggish. I still look at the back line, I look at the defense. It's just not as tight, not as composed as they yeah. need to be to get those results. You gotta wonder how long or short that leash is mm -hmm. on Toronto FC and their coaching yeah. staff, but to see if they can turn it around after an 0 6 start to the season. You mentioned Reggie Lamb, though, one of the highlights for Toronto FC, that great goal from distance. That will more than likely be up for the ATT MLS Goal of the Week, along with four other nominees. You can find that on MLSsoccer.com, a number of different ways. To vote, the latest edition of Extra Time Radio will also come out on Monday. And Power 5, Greg, this series we've been rolling out every week. This week is one of my favorites. It's uh, Field Generals. We're calling it the Generals. Mm. It's going to start with uh, one of the best midfielders in the league. You can find that and all the latest headlines and the highlights from the weekend on MLSsoccer.com. Yeah.